um, erring on the side of caution, I would say no, we should probably make sure he can um, hook in in another way. Okay. I don't, I'm not sure how else he's going to be able to, to hook in. Okay. Well, I see he's calling in. He can, he can call in like, um, uh, like we have on the notice, but it's. It should, so again, I would ask that everyone just to please mute your audio so that we can get feedback. Um, I have it, the time being 9 10. We'll call this fear board emergency meeting to order. First thing I'm going to do is I can see someone's faces, uh, but I want to take roll uh, of all the board members who are present on this call. Uh, and appreciate your time and appreciate the public's time today as well. Um, Ms. Jarman, are you present? Present. Mr. Bellin, Bellin. Present. Mr. Conway. Present. Mr. Perlin, are you there? Ms. Spalding is not here today. Ms. Fox, are you there? Based on that, we have, including myself, we do have four members of the board uh, in this meeting today. We do have a quorum. Uh, next on the agenda is the, the determination of the necessity of this call uh, for a brief explanation of why we can do this. Uh, I will turn it over to legal counsel Marsh to explain as we have in the past. Per Governor's Executive 34, uh, boards and commissions can meet to conduct essential business over telephone or audio, audio visual media. Um, I would ask for the board for a motion that the business to be here today is essential, that the business to be approved to be conducted over an audio visual medium, and that the board waive any rules or regulations that would prevent this media meeting from being conducted in an audio visual medium. So moved. Second. No motion and a second. Motion was Mr. Bellman. The second was Mr. Conway. As there are only those all in favor. Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Uh, Mr. Marsh, due to the fact that there, there, there are hurt. Other than myself, there are only three other board members on this call. Are you okay that I continue for without taking the role on every vote? Uh, Mr. Chair, for best practices, we should have a roll call vote just so it's clear um, in the record. It can be confusing with everyone saying I in this setting. Okay, so let's not try to go to the route of the council meeting earlier this week. Um, then all in favor of the motion, Mr. Bellamy. Aye. Uh, Mr. Jarman. Aye. Mr. Conway. Aye. Mr. Perlin. Ms. Fox. Ms. Spall. Ms. Are here. I have three eyes. Any any days amongst us? Three nine motion passes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Marsh. Um, from here, I will read. Even though we aren't here today, other than to discuss uh, potential citations, um, I'm still going to read the memo regarding appeals. If you're not satisfied, if you're not satisfied with the decision of the Metropolitan Beer Permit Board regarding your application or your hearing, you may appeal the decision to the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court pursuant to the requirements set forth in TCA 57-5-108. The decisions of the Metro Bureau Permit Board take effect on a date to be determined by the board. However, you may file an appeal within 60 days of the date of entry of the board's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and all procedural requirements have been met. Um, as today is an emergency call meeting, again, thanks everyone for being here. Um, uh, I do see that there are a number of members for the public. We are only here to discuss complaints um, as have been uh, recognized by the Beer Board 
staff and inspectors. Um, and before we go into that, I would ask Mr. Marsh, if you will give us the, just give us the legal reasoning why we're here and why the Beer Board has the authority so that the public in general may, may better understand. Absolutely, Mr. Chair. Uh, members of the board, uh, we're here today to, under an emergency special meeting to address allegations that permit holders violated set MCL 7.08.110A and or 7.08.150B by violating the chief medical, medical director's orders, I believe specifically order number six. These allegations are essential because they directly affect the health and safety of Davidson County citizens. 7 point, MCL 7.08.110A states that the Beer Board has the authority to suspend or revoke the per permit or permit holder who violates any provisions of the code or ordinance which has the effect of regulating beer. Per MCL 2.36.190, there's a violation of the code to violate the order of the Board of Health or the Chief, sorry, it is the uh, violation of it, the code to violate an order of the Board of Health or the Chief Medical Director. Uh, additionally, 7.08.150B states that the Board has the authority to suspend or revoke or issue a civil penalty when it appears that a beer permit holder is being, operate, being operated in such a manner to be detrimental to the public health or safety. Uh, these codes of provisions are laid out more, accurate, more in the inspector's mm -hmm. report. Um, which I believe you all received a copy of. Um, the board will be asked to, today to hear from the beer board inspector and the health department to determine whether there's probable cause to move forward with issuing a citation. Mr. Chair. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, to the board, um, we also have the director of the health call on this call. Uh, hello, I was having trouble hearing what you just said. Uh, if, you want, if you want to make a statement um, prior to us this evening. Oh, okay. Um, yes, I, I, I'm happy to. I'm just doing a sound check. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Dr. Michael Caldwell. I am the uh, Director of Public Health and the Chief Medical Officer for Nashville Davidson County. Um, my, um, I uh, had issued uh, a public health uh, order number six, uh, which is the public health order that uh, is in effect. That order uh, was reissued uh, again and is still in effect. It was reissued Friday, June 12th. So I'm happy to answer any specific questions about the details of that order, but I, I believe it's that public health order that is in effect that's um, been um, the subject of, of this uh, inspection. Thank you. Thank you, So as we proceed to the board, uh, so that you, uh, if you have questions uh, of, of Dr. Caldwell, who is here available to answer questions. Um, next, and we're gonna kind of Keep this in line with the way we generally do it, although we are obviously doing this a little bit differently than what we normally, or how we normally handle complaints, as we handle them all at one time generally. Um, at this point, I would like Here, to. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm sorry yes. to interrupt. Uh, I'm having a little difficulty uh, hearing, hearing you. It sounds a little muffled. Is that any better? I can move it closer. Uh, it's a little bit better. Sorry. Okay. Um, so at this point, I'd like to open the floor to um, uh, Mr. Melvin Brown, um, who will give us a rundown of the report that generated um, these potential violations. All right, sir. Can you hear me? I hear you fine. 
All right, sir. Uh, for brevity, I won't uh, repeat all the information that was covered by the doctor and Department of Law and just give you a brief overview of uh, observations on 613-2020. Uh, I went to the uh, five different uh, Metro beer permit holders listed in the spreadsheet, which includes the Moxie Nashville Downtown, Kid Rocks, Nashville Underground, Broadway Brew House, and Nudies, and, uh, and the Times are company on the uh, spreadsheet that's on the report provided to the board. The uh, four of those locations, which was all except Nashville Underground, Moxie, Kid Rocks, Broadway Brew House, and Nudies, there are photographs accompanying that indicate that, uh, as some uh, documentation of my observations, that they were in violation of two points of the order number six, phase two reopening in section four, uh, that bar areas must remain closed to the public. The bar may be used to prepare and service orders from patrons seated elsewhere. No interaction between the public, bartenders shouldn't be allowed, and alcohol may be served only at tables or booths for own premises consumption. So my observation was that at the Moxie, at Kid Rock, Broadway Brew House, and at Nudie's, that there were patrons seated at the bar for bar service. Okay. That concludes my presentation, subject to any questions that you have. All right, very good. So to the board, um, again, generally we take all the complaints, and historically have taken all the complaints at one time. Um, today's meeting obviously is, is quite different than uh, anything historically we have done. Um, due to the nature of uh, the reasoning behind today's meeting. So first, as we always do, I'll, I'll ask the board how, how, you, how we want to take today's process. Uh, and I'm open to discussion. Do we want to take them all at once? Do we want to take them individually? It appears that the violations are similar to the four that Mr. Brown has noted in his report. Um, also, statutorily, our max civil penalty is $1,000 on the first offense as it is a non-sale um, to minor. Um, however, if you have seen in the beer for the staff recommendations, there is no precedent for action during a pandemic or public health emergency. Um, and they have made the comment that under these circumstances, the board has a and its oversight authority available in the case of the This point, I'll uh, open the open up for the board to discuss how we want to address these four matters. We're very not to the rock while we do it out for news. We want to take them individually, and we want to take them as, as one. We can only do. And then we can move on to the board. Any questions? Yeah, I have one, Brian. Um, are any of these uh, establishments disputing um, anything that Mr. Brown? Or Inspector Brown has, because uh, if they are, maybe we should separate them out. And if they're not disputing, maybe we can take them all together. Well, here, here is um, here's here's what I want to keep it in line with doing what we what we do is on the complaint. We we don't really have public input at the complaint level. Um, depending on how we move forward today, then a permit holder has the ability to. Challenge that. If, if it's if it's a fine, they have the ability to pay the fine or challenge it in the form of a fee. Uh, obviously, any decision we make is um, they certainly have the right to challenge that in court in the circuit of chancery, um, as, as stated in the opening remarks um, regarding the decisions of the Metro Beer Permit Board. Um, but generally, on the complaint section of our Agenda, which is you know, remember more so than not in our day meeting. We, we don't have, we do not have public input. 
at this point, it's just an alleged violation. Um, so we have option to either sustain the citation or dismiss it. And then if, if they are sustained, then we move to a criminal complaint. Mr. Chair, I move that we take them all as one. All right, I have a motion from Ms. German to take them all as one. All in one motion, is that, is that what you're saying, Sean? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Second. Okay, second from Mr. Bellamy. Um, any additional discussion about that? Um, I'll say all in favor, but uh, if you'll give me a yay or nay when I call your name, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yay. Yay. Mr. Conway? Yeah. And then did Mr. Perlin and Ms. Fox make it to the call today? So of the three board members and attendants, other than myself, I have three nays, no nays. Most of passes, we'll take them all at one time. And Mr. Chair, this is legal for one second. Um, I'll just make it clear that we also do allow board members to uh, pull certain citations off if they feel like it should be treated at differently than the rest. Um, okay. Just to be clear. Okay, thanks. So we've, we've agreed that we're going to take them all at one time. And, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read the permit holder. And I will read the staff recommendation, and that's where I believe we do need some discussion, and we will go from there. Uh, number one, Harry O's Steakhouse, LLC, Kid Rocks, Big Ass, Honky Tonk, Rock and Roll, and Steakhouse. Staff recommended penalty. And again, this is where it is different than normal. Uh, under normal circumstances, uh, they would recommend a thousand for civil penalty. However, there's precedent, however, there is no precedent for a situation like we're in today. Number two, Hardy and Kelly LLC, Broadway Brew House, and the Mojo Grill. Uh, once again, the uh, staff recommended penalty for our first offense is a thousand dollars. However, there is no precedent. Number three, the Broadway Hotel LLC, Moxie, Nashville, downtown. Similar staff recommendation of, of, that would generally be $1,000 for a first offense. Uh, however, there is no precedent. And number four, Broadway Honky Tonk Venture LLC, Nudie's Honky Tonk. Staff recommended for a first offense, maybe $1,000. However, there is no precedent. To that degree, I'll open up for uh, additional discussion by the board or I'll entertain a motion on how to move on. Mr. Bellamy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my question is for Inspector Brown. Um, can you go into uh, a little bit of detail on, were there any warnings? Did these uh, establishments, what kind of notice did they receive, um, et cetera, before we got to, before we arrived at the place where we're issuing a, a complaint? Uh, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, for the uh, part of the beer board uh, inspections, uh, I made no warnings. Uh, I did have information that the uh, health department had interaction with several different uh, beer permit holders and some non-beer permit holders throughout Nashville and that some of many of them were downtown. So uh, what I was directed to do is go and do a quick observation survey of several different uh, beer permit premises downtown Saturday night. So I went and made those observations and we received uh, later and we subsequently uh, received the documentation 
of others that are cited that we'll bring before the board later that were, that were actually cited by the uh, health department itself. Uh, one of those is included in these or more, and but these are just the four observations that I made, including actually there's a fifth one, but they weren't in violation. And what we were looking for <clears throat> basically was <clears throat> the cut and dry. You're at the bar, you have customers seated at the bar or you don't. We didn't count patrons and we, we, leave, we leave that up to the fire marshal or the police, uh, but they got no warning from it. I, I would add uh, respectfully that uh, in the case of all of these and in the case of the other, other <clears throat> excuse me, the others that were cited, uh, when we bring those before, we will go back do another observation and take photo evidence and we'll bring that back before the board uh, in whatever manner is a correct protocol to to show that there is compliance now or that there is further non-compliance. So just, just uh, know that we will go back and check <clears throat> and we will let the board know. But they were given no warnings. No, this was just an observation after there had been interactions and reports uh, on the media of places being crowded in bars <clears throat> in bar service throughout Nashville, especially down there. Mr. Chair, if I may speak for one moment. Uh, Ms. Gilcrest, uh, Hugh Atkins has his hand raised as an attendee. He's a health department employee who may be able to assist um, in this matter. Okay. Mr. Atkins, you should be able to speak now. Okay. Um, yes, I'm Hugh Atkins with Metro Public Health Department. I'm the uh, Bureau Director for Environmental Health Services. And, uh, of course, I work with Dr. Michael Caldwell, who issued the uh, reopening orders. Um, we um, have an extensive uh, public outreach to uh, educate uh, the permit holders and business uh, holders in Metro about the uh, requirements of these orders at every phase. We are in phase two of the reopening now. So uh, in uh, most cases, I, in all cases actually, when we get a complaint through Hub Nashville or whatever on an establishment, we reach out first by telephone and uh, explain the requirements of the order and send copies of the order to the establishment. Then if we receive subsequent complaints, they go on a list for a site visit and possible citation. Of the uh, places on the uh, agenda today, uh, the uh, actually we also uh, offer uh, the ability to come and consult with, with people in person and we, uh, Dr. Michael Caldwell himself and Steve Crozier, who's of the Food and Facilities Division, conducted a walkthrough at uh, Kid Rocks, and uh, we had also received a subsequent complaint on them. So uh, we have in press releases, in the daily press briefings, uh, they were daily, but now Monday and Thursday briefings from the mayor's office, uh, we emphasize the requirements of the orders. So uh, all the establishments that are uh, in Davidson County, not just these and not just uh, obviously beer uh, permitted establishments uh, should have ample opportunity to be well aware of the requirements of the business that, that they operate. Uh, are there any, any additional questions for Mr. Brown, um, Mr. Atkins, uh, or Director Caldwell? Uh, I need to correct something I'd said earlier to Mr. Conway. Today, we, we or maybe I, I don't, um, again, today we are just uh, addressing these complaints. Um, our, our orders today are to issue the complaints as cited, and then we choose what the necessary fine may be or fine options. 
or we dismiss the complaint or complaints. Um, again, so there are there any is there any other discussion from the board? Any other questions? Uh, to the director, Mr. McDonough. Uh, uh, anything you need to state on the record about how these inspections were carried out or how they may be carried out in the future? Uh, not not at this time, Mr. Chairman. I just want to say that uh, uh, summed it up, summarized it quite nicely, and uh, just from social media and uh, media reports, uh, we and also uh, one of our inspectors who happened to be downtown um, on his own time, uh, Friday evening or Saturday, um, Saturday afternoon, uh, with family, um, made us aware of, of some things that were taking place downtown. And that, that's what drew our, our attention to that, to that area initially. Okay. Thank you. All right. To the board. Um, I'll entertain a motion, um, for, Either to dismiss the complaints or to issue a citation. And then I would ask that if, if it in the, in the form of a citation that you uh, specify in your motion. Excuse me. Uh Mr. Chairman, were, did you say something after that, after specifying your motion? Oh, I, 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 I probably meant to just end, end it right there. Just I would ask you that you specify the details of the motion and the details of the complaint or the citation that you wish to be issued. At this point, I'll entertain a motion from any board member. I move that we issue citation based on a staff recommendation. Ms. German, so that I understand what your um, intent, the staff recommendation, uh, can you define what that is? Is it the, is it the $1,000? I don't have the document in front of me as I'm mobile. So I move that whatever's in the notice um, is the citation that we issue. So I may have to lean on one of my uh, other board members so, to so, specify. And that's fine, but let me read what the staff recommendation is and how, it, how it's worded. Under normal circumstances in different ordinances, the staff would recommend a thousand dollar civil penalty for a first time offense. However, we have no precedent for action during a pandemic or public health emergency. Under these circumstances, the board has the full extent of its oversight authority available, ranging from a civil penalty to a suspension. That's the staff recommendation. So, yes, sir. Got it. I have so, a, a, a Bellamy, before you ask that question, uh, Mr. Armand, do you understand? Does that make sense? Of course it does. Yes, I, I'm okay. clear. Thank you. Okay, so I, I I just want to better understand your motion. Because the staff recommendation is specific to a dollar amount, but yet is vague beyond that. Okay, let me resend my motion. Let me get to my computer and open up the document and, and I'll be really clear in my next motion unless one of my, my colleagues has one. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bellamy. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, this is a procedural question. Uh, if it's appropriate to ask that question at this time. Sure. Are we, is this motion to sustain the complaint and then get to the penalty or is it to, have we already sustained the complaint and now we are issuing the penalty? Well, at this point we're, in, in generally our meetings, we would take all the complaints at one time and move, or if we just had one, we would read it, read the staff recommendation, and then move to issue a citation based on that, based right. on whatever we chose. 
So we're not really sustaining anything other than voting to issue the citation as referred to us by the staff. Understood. So then in light of that, I would like to have some more discussion on what the range of our uh, authority, what, cite, what uh, penalties we are authorized to give under that citation. And I don't know if that's question is for Mr. Marsh or Mr. McDonald. Um, Mr. Marsh? I can answer that, Mr. Bellamy. Uh, the board is allowed to issue a suspension or revocation. Um, in this case, uh, the staff recommendation is suspension, if that's the option. Sorry, I don't want to speak for staff. But they are, you are also allowed to issue a civil penalty in lieu of a suspension. So at this stage, um, the options are a civil penalty uh, to a suspension. And what's the, so, maximum, what's the maximum suspension we can issue? Uh, I don't believe there is a maximum on the time period. I would have to ask staff of um, the past procedures. There is not, again, I think it's stated in the inspector's report, but there's no real precedent uh, for this. Mr. McDonough, do you have? I as uh, Mr. Marsh stated, there, there, there's obviously no precedent for this, but if, if we're looking at how we handle a first time offense, the, if you were looking at a suspension, it would be for what we typically do is for seven days, but that, that's just, that would be the recommendation. That's not necessarily uh, set in stone for, for the board. So just as a, as a clarification to Mr. Bellamy, um, that the board has the option to issue a suspension on on any and every case, but we are we are, we are capped on our civil penalty at a thousand dollars for anything other than a sale to minor. You know that's a statutory requirement or statutory uh, limit. However, today you know, there is no precedent, and that's mentioned in the staff recommendation in our agenda today. But there, there's no precedent for these matters today. But I would go back and just reiterate what Mr. McDonough just said that generally for our first offense, our, our, our civil penalty option, if you will, is a thousand dollars. Again, generally for our first offense. So can I ask a, uh, a question? So though we don't have precedent for this particular issue, we have had precedent relative to um, what we consider um, issues of public safety um, and public health. Um, in particular, we had, I think, two markets that in the past we have done, um, and, I, and, and I'll lean on um, the chair and legal to remind me, but I believe we've done a temporary suspension so that we have opportunity for public um, uh, engagement or public conversation, which is always important to me. Um, so my question is, if someone can remind me what we've done in those instances, and then if that option is available here, then I would like the opportunity for us to hear from uh, the the individuals who have, or the the complainant, or the the com those who we have the complaints against, um, our holders, our license holders, so that we can have further conversation um, with them regarding this. Sure, uh, Ms. Jarman, on those two. Um, markets that you're referring to, I think the reason, and I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm re recalling the conversations that we had uh, on particularly pertaining to those is that we got to the point we got to as a board after a lot of discussion, a lot of public feedback, and a and a history of violation of if someone might say violation of the public welfare um, clause in metro code so there was a there was a history in those cases that was presented to us of, of uh, police uh, calls issues that occurred on those or at those locations so that's in my in my recollection that's how we got to the decision there. 
again, this is, this is very different because one, I've never been to a pandemic, I recall, um, or anything like this where a Metro health order um, really drove the actions of the entire city, not just one specific location. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, I would also state that those weren't um, at the stage of the board's question. The question before the board was not whether to issue a citation or not. Those had been already cited and were at the hearing stage. Um, with at this stage, if we move to a suspension um, immediately without the hearing, um, there would be due process questions and proper notice questions. Sure. So again, our, our, our the result when we end this meeting today is is just what citation we're issuing these four locations. Is it a is it a money penalty that they either may pay or they may challenge in the form of a hearing back in front of the board? Or if it is a as as a legal counsel just alluded to a a suspension, they still have that same right. They are they, they're still going to be able to challenge it. And then there are options to um, challenge it in, in court as well. Look at today's today, every citation, I'll remind the board, every citation we issue generally is either have a money penalty with the option of serving, or, or let me put this way, is a is a time penalty or an option of a money penalty in lieu of time. So generally our complaints in the issue those would be seven day suspension followed by a 30 day probation or the option of X dollar amount in lieu of serving the time. So I would ask that again I go back to if there's a motion to be made on these four today that we've all agreed that the board has agreed to uh, a few moments ago to take them all at the same time. If there's a, if there's a citation recommendation, I would, I would ask you to be specific in that area. Mr. Chairman, if I may um, kind of inquire with the other board members, Ms. Jarman and Mr. Bellamy, Sitting here thinking about is that a thousand dollars isn't enough. The seven day suspension seems to me to be too much, but it seems like we have the leeway, given that it's a pandemic, that we could go above a thousand dollars. Am I correct on that? And then I'd like to notice the other board members' thoughts on just kind of what I just said. Well, I'll address that and I'll ask Mr. Marks, and basically I'll just read what the staff recommended recommendations are in the very last sentence, it does say, under these circumstances, the board has the full extent of its oversight authority available, ranging from a civil penalty to a suspension. And that's, I think that that comment and the staff recommended comments were and have been uh, approved by legal. Mr. Marsh. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure it is clear that there is a cap on the civil penalty. It would be under the board's discretion. However, I think it is as laid out in the inspector's report, generally for a first time offense, it is a thousand dollar civil penalty, but um, there is there is no precedent again. So it would be up to the board's discretion. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. Uh, to Mr. Conway's point, um, and to everyone's point, this is sort of uncharted territory. So, you know, as much as we have some experience in our day to day issuing of, of citations and whatnot, this is something that that whatever we do today is going to be precedent. So I think we really have to give serious consideration to what that precedent looks like and how consistent we're going to be in the future when these things arise, because this will not be the first uh and and this is not the first and won't be the last time something like this comes in front of us um let me rephrase although this is the first i don't think it will be the last time 
Um, so the question is, you know, is, is part of what we're doing here an attempt to dissuade folks from um, coming before us with this same issue again and making sure that they're following the order from the health department and being safe. And I think uh, to Mr. Conway's point, seven days does seem a little bit uh, too much in this particular instance, but $1,000 definitely don't seem enough. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, we can issue a suspension without a civil penalty option, correct? Can issue a citation for a suspension without a civil penalty option. Okay. Thank you. And we can do that under any circumstance or any complaint um, that we issue. Right. And I, 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 but traditionally, we always do the penalty, or you can accept the suspension. That's that's what we've always done before. That's uh, correct. Okay. Unless, unless it's a matter that's been in front of us multiple times, and we, and it's a matter that the staff brings our attention that is a challenging location, as Ms. Jarman was referring to earlier. Um, we have issued citations for a hearing. Um, but regardless of what we, uh, if we, if we issue a citation for anything other than a hearing, the permit holder has the opportunity to have a hearing. And Mr. Chair, I just, sorry. Go ahead. You're on mute, Justin. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if after the hearing, um, if the board at this stage chooses to issue a citation with a suspension but no civil penalty option, if after the hearing the board determines there should be a civil penalty option, they can still issue one at that time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions by the board? Um, Mr. Atkins, you have your hand raised. Is that from earlier? Or do you have another comment? No, that, that's from earlier. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Billy, um, Mr. Conway, Ms. Jarman, um, I'll, I'm so open to a motion on issuance of a citation and the options. All right, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, to attempt a motion here. Okay, the floor is yours. All right, I'd like to move that the four uh, four named locations um, that we issue a citation in the amount of a five day suspension without a civil penalty option. Um, Due to the unprecedented nature uh, of these circumstances and the pandemic and public health emergency. And that's my motion. Mr. I'll Bellman, second. For clarification, does that uh, have any probationary period? Uh, no, no, sir. The motion is a five day suspension. Uh, Ms. Jarman, did you second? I did. All right, now we're in the discussion phase. Is there any, any additional discussion? All right, I have a motion. I have a second for a five day suspension. Did I call your name? Would you give me either a yay or nay? Ms. Jarman? Yay. Mr. Bellamy? Yay. Mr. Conway? And again, Mr. Perlin and Ms. Fox, I don't believe are in the meeting today as panelists. Motion passes. The board has issued a five-day suspension for the four permit holders, um, as noted in the public notice. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. McDonough, 
Um, can you give me the time frames? As, as again, we don't have the ability to issue a, a, a written site or a written thing today. And we're going to issue these citations. Uh, can you describe the process that's going to happen next? Obviously, they don't take effect immediately because they're just citations. Um, there are still the um, right of the permit holders to challenge those citations. Right. Have a hearing in front of the board uh, at a scheduled time to be determined. Right. At that, at that point, uh, once these have been issued, they then have uh, 14 days uh, to request a hearing at that point. When you get, when you get, when you get the citation, will the citation uh, be distributed to the permit holder? Uh, that's something that, that we can, we can discuss. Um, I'm, I'm currently out of town, but, um, we, we can work to, uh, to get these delivered, um, as soon as possible. Okay. Um, and then they have 14 days to notify the board on, on, on what they, whether they choose to serve a suspension or. Right. Um, from the date that it's delivered to them. Okay. Very well. Thank you. Uh, are there any other comments by the board? Any other business to be discussed today? Uh, Mr. McDermott, anything from you? Nothing at this time, no, sir. Very well. Uh, without any other business, Unless I uh, have an objection to adjournment, we can adjourn. Thanks, everyone.